welcome back to my channel. It's Tuesday, woo woo, and I thought I'd do a little video on things I wish I had considered or knew before I designed my tiny house, and then some tips that um, I gathered while I've been living tiny. Um, so this list is just things personal to me, they might not be on other things I wish I knew before I went tiny list, and it's not meant to be, you know, too serious, and like some of the things might be a little bit ridiculous, but they were very important to me. So, let's dive in. So, thing I wish I knew, numero uno. Prioritize what's important to you first, and then factor in the rest of the stuff. Um, like I said in my previous video, books were so, so important to me, so I did prioritize them. But then, at some point during my build, um, I was like, I have to have a big kitchen. Like, my kitchen has to be big. It's a house and it's a big kitchen. And my sister, who helped me design my build, turned to me and she was like, Alexis, you don't even like to cook. Why do you need a big kitchen? And I was like, oh, you're right. And she was right because I had this notion in my head that I needed a big kitchen. I was going to waste a lot of space in my house on something I don't need that much. Um, I still have a pretty decent sized kitchen now, but it's not like huge. Hey, let go. I'm back again. So, yeah, prioritize what's important to you and nobody else, and not society. If it's hugely important for you to have this master grand bathroom, then totally prioritize that and don't worry about the rest. Um, on the flip side to that, I didn't prioritize how good a comfy shower is. Um, during my design process, I was like, I don't use much shower time anyways. I need a big shower, make it as small as possible, but still usable. And they did. And my shower is teeny, 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 teeny. And when I was pregnant, it was almost unbearable. Like, third trimester, I was huge, and <laughs> my shower was so small. So if I could go back, I wish I had got a bigger shower. But priorities. At the time, it wasn't a priority. But chip number one. Um, now, this thing I wish I'd do during my design is something that uh, Nalini, my daughter, Danielle. Um, no, stop it. Every video. Every video. She fell. Oh, she's fine. She's fine, y'all. promise. She's fine. You okay? She's fine. Anyways. Yes. This tip, I know, is probably on a lot of these type of lists because it's about parking. But I'm going to read it to you as I wrote it because it's perfect. Try to have parking. It's okay if you don't. Don't try to live like Instagram. And what I mean by that is, um... If you don't have parking, like, down packed for your tiny house, but that's the only thing you don't have, I don't really believe that you should just, like, not build it and just give up on this dream just because you don't have parking. Because I've heard a lot of people say that, like, oh, I would totally build a tiny house, but I don't have anywhere to park it. And I'm like, but if this is something you really, really want to do, just do it. Terrible advice, I know, but it's something I wholeheartedly believe. Um, but don't try to live, like, Instagram. Y'all. Living in an RV park is okay. 100% okay. It would be great if we could all get our tiny houses and live on beautiful land with beautiful views and all this space and animals and wildlife and all this great stuff. But if we can't, that's okay too. We can live in an RV park and that can you can make that fun and beautiful on your own. Um, it doesn't mean you have to be in an RV park forever. It doesn't mean you're going to be in an RV park forever. But just because you have to live in an RV park, it doesn't mean anything. It doesn't mean it's bad, okay? It's totally fine. Did I like living on the horse farm for the first couple of weeks? Of course I did. It was beautiful. I would see deer. I would see birds of all kinds. I got to see horses and cows. I love cows. But when it rained, it flooded. And that sucked. And right now, I live in a community. And y'all, I could like, my neighbors are like 10 feet away from each other. Like, we are not too far, but we still have a million. Our lot space is pretty large. And I'm fine, and I love it. So you don't have to live like Instagram. Just live how you want to live in your beautiful house anywhere. So yeah, 
that was. I think I wish I knew number two. I think I wish I knew number three. If traveling is your shtick. I love that word, shtick. <laughs> if traveling is your thing, get your the house appropriately sized for that. Y'all, when I got my tiny house designed, I had no kid. And I was 100% single. It was just me and the puppers. And I had a dream of taking my tiny house finding a truck and just going around the United States and living and my builder excuse me had to sit down with me and was like uh, Alexis your tiny house is 26 feet long yeah yeah it's 26 feet long about 17,000 pounds yeah 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 it's pretty big pretty big it's not built to travel often and I was like <laughs> what do you mean it's not built to travel it's on wheels he was like, yeah, it's on wheels, but it's massive and um, kind of big. So it can travel, yeah, but it's not meant to travel every couple months. We don't build houses to travel like that. And I was just, what's that word? Distraught. My dream. Poof, God. I'm totally kidding. I could not get the 24 foot. I looked at it. It was beautiful, but it was too small. But yeah. 24 feet and below are perfect, perfect for traveling. Obviously, you could travel every six months with higher, but it does start to the wear and tear. It does start wear and tear in your house, and you know, yeah, that's what he told me at least. Um, and if you look at videos, most of the ones that travel a lot are 24 feet and below, which is something unless it's been put together before. So yeah, if traveling is your thing, get the house appropriately sized for it. If just living in a tiny house is your thing that you want to move. Like, I moved this house twice already, and I'm kind of have to move for another year, a couple, couple of years, but it will be moved again. Um, but, yes. Yeah. So, what do I say? I do just move It's not meant to travel. Bottom line. If you want to travel, get 124 feet and below. I didn't say it, my builder did, so. <laughs> Oh, number four, something I wish I knew while I was making my design. Whether you're a single woman, a single man, a couple, if you have even the slightest thought that you are going to live in your tiny house with children, try to build that in or put that into your build. Boy, I wish I had done that. I got really lucky that my daughter's grandfather is into woodworking and he built me a, you know, protective barrier out of my loft because y'all, my loft just had a little privacy slab wooden thing and then open to My daughter can literally, y'all, vault herself off of it. She will try it. She has tried it. <laughs> she is that type of child. Um, so I got lucky, but if not, I would have had to, I don't know what I would have done to protect her from lock living. And if I could go back, I would totally do the reverse lock, okay? Sleep on the floor, and then, you know, up to the living room, up there, reverse lock. It was cute. That design started to come, become really, really popular after I had already designed my tiny house, so it was too late then. And I had no idea I was gonna have kids, in a tiny house at least. So, yeah put that into design. It doesn't have to be a major part of, part of the design, but you should definitely think about it while you're designing your tiny house. Food for thought. Uh, oh, outlets. Outlets, y'all. Outlets. This one, oh, so many mistakes on this one. One of the, uh, a tiny house couple I know, they did this right. They got great advice, and I wish I had done it. Look, in, like in your space, in your house right now, look at where all your stuff is plugged in, where you're going to need outlets, okay? Because once the house is built, you gotta get someone to come back out here and add an outlet if you need it. You don't ever want to take away outlets. No one's ever like, I've got too many outlets, let's get rid of some. But you can always add outlets. I did not think of this at all. So my builders should put outlets where they thought outlets should go. And... <laughs> I've got this breakfast nook area thingy and the closest outlet to the breakfast nook is on the other side of the stove so when I'm doing any type of schoolwork or anything I have to like drape the cord over the stove to plug it in because there's no other one near 
And so I wish that I had known that I would have put a lot more outlets into a lot more easily accessible places for me personally. Um, so don't do what I did and just throw it up in the air and hope that outlets are where you want them to go. Talk about outlets and plan for them. Trust me, it'll be a lifesaver. Uh, so yeah, those were just some uh, things that I wish I knew during my build. And now I'm going to go into the tips that I gathered from Living Tiny. There you go, there's a ball. Tip number one, humidity. So tiny houses are built so well, so well, leave well leave my word. They're insulated so well that they trap a lot of moisture. A lot of moisture. And you know what trap moisture equals? Humidity. And you know what humidity equals? Mold. And you know what mold equals? Mold problems. Mold sucks. So, get a dehumidifier. One of my tiny house friends, they showed me a dehumidifier on dehumidifier on Amazon that I got and I keep it in my bathroom. Um, because in my living room, kitchen area, I have the, uh, the mini split. It's got a dry setting on it, and the instructions say at least that that setting works by um, lowering my temperature by taking the humidity out of the air, or moisture out of the air, whatever word they use. Um, and so that works in my house, and then the one for the bathroom because it doesn't reach that far, blah, 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 blah. But y'all, get a humidifier. They also don't recommend having your mattress directly on the floor, especially if it's foam. Um, mine is because I just didn't have time to find something to put under the mattress that, was, that I could afford. And the mattress on top, so I got a box spring mattress, and I just really keep a look a lookout on it. Um, I try to keep the moisture down in my house, open windows when you're cooking, vest kit, open windows, all that fun stuff. Um, so yeah, just think about humidity. I didn't know anything about that because I came from a normal sized house and then I, which, and then I moved into a normal sized apartment and you don't have to worry about humidity problems as much and you didn't even know that this was a problem. But how did that come out? So yeah, humidity. Uh, tip number two. Oh. If I could go back, I totally would have separate washer and dryer. Everybody raves about the washer dryer problem, and I agree. They're a great idea, and I honestly think that I just had a bad experience, but mine don't work. It washes, but it doesn't dry. And I've called the company twice. I've explained to them the problem. They told me, both told me something different to do. I've done both of these things, and the things still don't work. I have to take it apart one of these things, but I'm afraid I can't put it together, but anyway. So I basically paid extra for a wash because I dry my clothes, I air dry my clothes now. So if I could go back, I just would have gotten a smaller size stackable washer dryer unit um, so that I hopefully wouldn't have any problems. Uh, so yeah, but washer dryer covers are still really great. Uh, I just personally would have opted for the stackable if I could go back. Uh, Compost toilet and green washing. Y'all, I have a separate villa. And when my villa came, it came with little green composting bags that I could put into my toilet and, you know, do my business. And then, voila. What it did not tell me was that the only how you can compost those bags is in a industrial composting facility. Ah! I didn't know this, you guys, and it sounds really dumb saying it out loud, but I really didn't. Um, and I also didn't know that just throwing away your remains, um, they don't break down in the landfill. It sounds very stupid, I know, but I didn't know that. And it's that. So, if you're going to get a compost toilet, and you're, you have to humanure it yourself, compost it yourself, um, which I know some people do, and I know some people don't, that don't. Um, personally, where I am right now, I can't, um, I don't have the space, I'm not going to be here long enough for it to, you know, finish, and I am not going to move humanure with me to my other, my next place, like, that's just not happening. So, yeah, give me one second. Not bad. Let's make sure that this thing focuses the virus, it's really their thing. So, yeah, if I could go back, I probably would have chosen a different toilet style 
or learn more about human manure and where I was and talk to my landlady from beforehand because I've been here for like, long enough that I, I could have done it in the beginning um, had I known what I know now. But you know, he lived in England. So yeah. What are we talking about? Oh yeah. <laughs> tip. <sighs> Y'all, another tip, dog hair. Dog hair is literally everywhere. When I was a dog, what else? Jesus Christ. So when I was a child, I had a dog, but I had a little tiny poodle mix. And poodles, they don't shut. And so as my mom died, I wanted like a real dog to like help me through the grief process because the internet said I should do blah blah blah. So I got a Mountain Cur, Mountain Cur mix off Craigslist, y'all. Craigslist again. Um, and I lived in an apartment with carpet, so I didn't notice all the hair. But now that we're in the tiny house, oh, I just left like 30 minutes ago and my house is already full of hair again. Uh, and it's everywhere and it never stops. So, if having dog hair everywhere all the time is something you don't like, don't get a dog that shed in a tiny house. It's like a carpet at all times. Not my favorite, but she's a cutie and I love her to death. So we'll keep her. I'm totally kidding. There was never an option whether or not I was going to get rid of her. So, but yeah. Dog hair everywhere. Do you guys? Okay. Sorry. There's just so much stuff going on. But yeah. Oh, another thing. Tip from Living Tiny. Binding blinds are hard. Because the windows are customized per house. You know, as you know. And so... You either have to buy customized lines, which can be a little expensive, or just hope that the store has something close to the side of your window. So right now, I've got these IKEA shades on all of my windows, and my ex put them up some type of way because they don't fit right, and like so out of like the corner, like the corners are off, so it's not like completely fitting, um, and it's just it's just horrible. Um, so yeah, finding blinds can be very hard. Um, in my loft, I still don't have any like sorta. I wanted curtains, but I couldn't buy curtains that were long enough for the windows, so I had to settle for those like privacy wallpaper sheet things you can put on windows. Uh, that's what I have up there now. I'm probably gonna eventually make some. I know how to sew. I just sew very slowly. Mm, yeah, very slowly. But I might just try. I really want some sh what are they called doll? Curtains up there, because I like them. And I would love curtains in this house too. But they're all so long. So long. But yeah. So that's pretty much it. All the things I wish I knew while I was getting getting my build done and some things that I learned while living in my tiny house. Um, if you have any questions or any tips that you learn while living tiny or any tips that you learn from other people living tiny, feel free to leave them in the comments below so that we can all share in the wealth of knowledge because, like I always say, research is important and you can never know enough. Thank you so much for watching my video. Next week's video is going to be on something I have no idea yet, but I'll figure it out. Hope you have a wonderful day and a wonderful week. Blessed be.